Everybody's going crazy over this Matt Harvey situation. You know all about it, the pitch limits, the innings limits, that kind of stuff. But the media in particular is going nuts over this, and I have a theory about this. Yeah, they're right to be against him, whatever, whatever your opinion is fine, but they built Matt Harvey up way, way up, and with good reason, too. He's a fine pitcher, but he had other things going on for me. He was in the gossip columns. He spoke his mind, and they saw this guy as kind of a modern-day Joe Namath. They fell in love with Matt Harvey, they being the media. Now when he does this, they felt jilted by this guy. He let him down, so they're attacking him. They're going after him, and I think it's almost like someone that lost their girlfriend or someone. He's, he jilted them. So they're very upset about this. We'll see where it goes. There's one certainty here. He can erase all this bad stuff going on now, all the bad vibes, by going out and pitching well. That's the bottom line. Giant season starts Sunday night against the Cowboys. Now, the Giants have a lot of question marks, a, a lot of question marks, and Tom Coughlin is on the spot. You know, he's pretty much had a honeymoon with the media. There have been speculation on and off. The Giants have had a few bad seasons in a row that he might be gone, but management always keeps him. And I don't expect them to get rid of him during the season. But would be, what's going to be interesting is this. Who will be the first guy to call for his head to say he's got to go, he's finished, he's through? Will that person emerge? Will there be media pressure on the Giants to get rid of Coughlin at the end of the season, midway through the season, or even earlier if they get off slow? It'll be interesting to watch. My bet is they lay off Coughlin. You know why? You know why? Because they love him. You know, we talked about Kurt Schilling last week, how he got suspended for a game by ESPN. But they, well, they upped the ante in Bristol and got rid of him for the whole season because of that email he sent out after the tweet or whatever. You know, you know what happened. But here's the deal. Upon suspending him, they left it open to, as to whether he will be t return next season to Sunday Night Baseball. And I have no clue what they're going to do. You know, they replaced him with Jessica Mendoza, the first woman that they've ever used as a baseball analyst, and she's very good. So I don't know what they're going to do with Schilling. Would you like to see him come back? Do you feel strongly? Do you think they did the wrong thing by getting rid of him? Get in touch with me. We'll, 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 we'll air all this out. We'll air all this dirty laundry out right here on the Whatchamacallit show. Do I think he'll be back? I doubt it. I really doubt it. The end of the line here with the tweets, the emails. You know, I wrote a column about the situation. Jessica, McL Jessica McLaughlin, the wife of the Washington Redskins GM, tweeting out about an ESPN reporter, Diana Rossini, saying that she traded sex for... A scoop and you know it was a mess it was a real mess and you know there was apologies but I didn't buy any of the apologies from the Redskins whatever anyway so I get a tweet uh, an email on this from a guy named Bob I Dzidik, Dzidik, I guess it is he says to me really you're worried about this situation that we just outlined while Judge Berman destroys the integrity of the game by letting that lying cheating crybaby Tom Brady get away I don't know about that. I don't know how you can compare the two, but uh, whatever. I, I accept your opinion. Now we go on to, the, let's see what we have here. Oh, this is an interesting one. We talked last week about the horrible situation in Atlanta when the guy fell out of the stands and got killed and how it was handled by the announcers. Well, here's one of the announcers that did the game, Justin Kutcher. He did the game on television in Fox Sports 1. He's tweeting to me, and he said he read the piece about the column about what we just talked about. He says he calls this situation that he had to deal with, that was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. I still can't get the image out of my head. I know that's a tough thing to get over. He did a really good job on TV, so, you know, it's still obviously impacting him. He's still thinking about it. And finally, we have Gary Ols Whiskey. Gary of Gary O1476 tweeting, he goes, to me, Raceman, I don't know what he's talking, which one particularly he's talking about. He says, that was one of the most lame jokes I've ever heard. Please don't try to be funny. You suck at it. You know what? You get out of here.